Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So it's been a few weeks since I've done any videos um, on the pole barn project and I wanted to do a quick catch up video, talk about some of the progress and then talk about what's gonna happen tomorrow which will be uh, concrete on the floor. So uh, let's get, get right to it. Uh, first thing I wanna uh, talk about is uh, I've got heat air conditioning uh, installed in the barn now. This is uh, what's known as a PTAC unit, and that stands for Package Terminal Air Conditioner. Um, a typical PTAC unit <clears throat> will have uh, air conditioner for cooling and then strip heat or resistance heat for uh, winter uh, heat. Uh, this particular, particular unit is a more modern version that uh, the heat pump in this can reverse, so it can do air conditioning in the summer and heat in the winter, and then it also has backup uh, resistance heaters. And um, these are real common in hotels and apartment buildings. Um, you see them mounted to the wall, and um, real simple to operate. This can be controlled from the panel up here or a thermostat. Um, and uh, I've had one of these in my main workshop for 10 years now, and it's really just perfect for a workshop because I can turn it on whenever I go out there to work, whether it's winter or summer. Um, but this one being, uh, you know, 10 years newer is quite a bit more efficient. Um, it has really good energy efficiency rating. I uh, forget the number. It's like around 12 or 13. And so it's getting up into the range where it competes with uh, a good mini split system. Uh, but the benefit of this type of uh, PTAC or package terminal heat pump in this case um, is that it's self-contained. You don't have any tubing. You don't have an inside and outside unit and need to charge your lines with refrigerant. This is a self-contained unit. You basically just take it out of the crate, stick it in the wall. Uh, I had to wire up a uh, temporary two uh, 40 volt 20 amp circuit for this. Um, but that's pretty much it. It plugs in, it runs. I tested it last night and it worked great. Um, and I'm a little bit ahead of schedule for this unit. Uh, you know, I would have rather have uh, put up the insulation and, and finished the walls uh, before I put this in. Uh, but we're in the temperature range right now where we're marginal for concrete work. And so I really wanted to get this in before the concrete slab was poured, just so I can run this uh, overnight when we get temperatures down into the 20s just to keep the inside of the barn, you know, uh, well above freezing while that, that concrete cures. And so this is in, uh, it's working, uh, real happy with it. Um, and uh, if I'm remembering right, this was about uh, $1,100 for this unit. And that's a 15,000 BTU cooling capacity, a little bit oversized for this, um, barn but you know the barn while it will be insulated it's not going to be nearly as good as a house as far as thermal management so I want to go a little bit uh, up in the rating for the square footage uh, just to keep things cool out here in the summer um, so you know for the price it's hard to beat these units um, again you just stick it into the wall and uh, plug it in and, and away you go uh, so that's in uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the entrance door all right, so here's the entrance door uh, I put on the barn, and this is also a little bit ahead of schedule. Normally, I wouldn't put this in until after the concrete floor was in, um, but we kept getting nor'easters, and I kept getting rain and snow blowing into the barn through this opening, and I'm like, you know what? I need this door to go up sooner than later, so I put it in a couple weeks ago. Um, this is a masonite fiberglass door. Got this at Home Depot. This was right around $400 which is actually a, a really good value for a fiberglass uh, craftsman style door. Um, I've got Thermatrue doors on my house, which I think are a little bit step up in quality, uh, but those were like seven or $800. And to be honest, this one seems to be built uh, pretty much just as, as nicely as the Thermatrue. The, maybe the window details are a little bit uh, uh, less uh, ritzy looking, but uh, still for a barn for $400, this is a really nice door. It has good insulation value um, and it's a nice solid door. Um, I, I, uh, a lot of times when you hang a door in a pole barn, you gotta go crazy with the shims. Um, and uh, that was that was definitely the case here. You know, the, the you, you wanna keep this door nice and square and have a uniform gap all the way around between the door and the jam. And you're putting in a pole barn with big heavy wood posts and uh, uh, rough rough framing. And so 
Uh, it took me a little bit longer than usual to hang this door, but uh, it's, it's, it's nice and, and true um, and, and came out great. I put a lock set on here. I happen to have um, an extra lock set from when we built our house, and this is uh, m -Tech, uh lock set. Uh, they make some of the nicest lock set hardware you'll, you'll find. This is typically only found on high-end homes, uh, commercial buildings uh, where you see uh, just a higher grade of, of uh, quality in, in your lock sets. Uh, so this is really overkill for, for a pole barn, but uh, I had it. It was already paid for. Um, I have a feeling that this lock set was probably as much as the door cost. Um, but I don't want to think about that. It was it was extra laying around, and uh, it's great. So I've got the, uh, the, the, the handle, uh, deadbolt, key to match my house without having to do anything, and... Uh, and so that's ready to go. So this door turned out real nice. And uh, eventually this will get paint. Paint's going to have to wait till the spring uh, when things warm up. So now let's go uh, back inside and talk about prep for the concrete floor. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about um, is uh, forming and bracing. Um, and uh, I'm over here near one of the garage doors and I've got the uh, form board laid down here. And it's not nailed down yet because I'm still moving equipment in and out of here. Uh, but it will be nailed down uh, before we, we start pouring concrete. And there's a bunch of different ways you can handle your floor and your outside apron or driveway when you're doing a pole barn. Uh, generally though, you want at least a half inch to up to an inch drop between your, your inside floor and your apron. I've got this spec'd out for three quarter inch drop. And in fact, you know, these garage doors were put in uh, well in advance of the concrete. So I had to work all that out ahead of time so that the garage doors could be set to the right height, but they are set up for a three quarter inch drop between the floor and the apron. Now, a lot of people will try and pour uh, the floor and the apron at the same time with the same load of concrete. Um, but when you're doing a polished floor like I'm doing here, you know, as I mentioned, that's got air entrainment, that's got fiber, uh, hot water, accelerator. That's a different mix of concrete than you'd want to use on the outside for an apron, especially if you're going to do a broom finish on, uh, on that apron. Um, really, we're tailoring the mix for tomorrow to be uh, for this floor inside, knowing that it's going to be polished. And uh, that really would not be an optimal mix for uh, the apron. It's going to have a broom finish, especially since it's going to be cold weather. You know, the inside of the barn is going to be heated tomorrow night to, to keep keep the concrete happy. Uh, this outside part would not be, and so if we use that same concrete mix outside, it's just not gonna set up right. It's just not the right mix for the right time. And so this is gonna be done in two different pours. And so I've got the form laid out basically to, to come in from the wall about uh, 10 inches and then go across. And that's gonna um, uh, basically allow a, a cutout uh, for the apron to be put in in the next step and the next pour, which will probably happen a week or two from now. And uh, basically this is just kind of a cutout to let the garage door come down and let me have a three quarter inch higher elevation for my interior floor uh, uh, than the apron. That's, that's really all there is to it. Most of the time you're doing this form before the garage doors are in and so it's not a big deal. In this case, I've got these tracks coming down. They come down to apron level three quarter inch below floor level. So I had to do a little bit of Mickey Mouse work to form up around those tracks because we don't want to embed those in concrete uh, for the, the interior floor. But uh, that's basically all set up and ready to go. And uh, we'll let us basically do the floor and the apron in two different pours with the optimal concrete mix for each, each pour and uh, get the right grade and get the right drop uh, for the set out. So now let's go back around outside and we'll talk about bracing. Okay, so we're over here um, on the east wall of, of the barn where I could get some afternoon shade. Um, and I uh, wanted to talk about bracing the wall. Um, as you probably know, when you do a pole barn, you've got posts that are generally every six to eight feet. And then you've got a skirt board uh, that's just two by lumber uh, between those posts. And if you just uh, roll up and pour concrete inside of the barn, that skirt board is going to bow out under the pressure from the concrete. And you know, concrete's a dense, basically it's in a liquid form. Uh, when it's poured, it's, a, it's like a dense liquid. 
even in four inches of concrete, you have a heck of a lot of pressure at the bottom of that uh, column of, of liquid uh, uh, that is wet concrete. And that's enough to bow out your skirt boards. Um, and that leads to two problems. Uh, you know, the first problem is that you're actually, when that happens, you're actually increasing the volume of the area you're putting your concrete into. And you can actually run short of concrete. On a large pole barn, if your skirt boards bow out, you know, you're adding just a little bit of extra volume between every post and on a big enough pole barn that can add up to a noticeable um, um, fraction of a yard and throw things off. Because normally, you know, when you plant concrete, you uh, go for another half yard or 10% more just to be on the safe side. Well, you don't want to eat up your margin because all your walls bowed out at the bottom and created more volume. And so. Um, it's real important to come in and brace your walls and that's what I've done here. Uh, basically between uh, along the skirt halfway between every set of posts I've come in and, and put a, a brace and I just use scrap lumber for this. It doesn't have to be uh, crazy. Before we pour tomorrow I'll come around and check to make sure all my stakes are still tight in the ground. I can just you know ram a shim in there if I need to but uh, you know that's going to prevent that skirt board from bowing out to make sure we control the volume of this pour. And then also, you know, you know, afterwards, you don't have wavy walls. And I've seen both of both of those things happen on pole barn projects uh, over the years. And so, you know, this is a kind of a, a heads up kind of a tip. If you're gonna pour concrete inside of a pole barn, definitely brace your skirt board. It doesn't have to be complicated. You don't have to put a zillion stakes in here. Basically, you want to go go along the wall and make sure that you don't have more than about three to four feet of uh, two by lumber in your skirt that's unsupported. And so here I put these braces basically between every pair of posts and uh, between the braces and then the, the timber screws used to hold the, the, the skirts to the posts. That should be more than adequate to address any issues we have when the concrete pressure starts pushing against the skirt board. So uh, that's the last thing I want to talk about today. Um, I will try and get some video tomorrow when the concrete goes down, that, but that's usually a hectic process. Uh, we're going to have four guys here um, working with a foreman and I'm, I'm just going to stay out of their way and, you know, I'll, I'll be the gopher. If they need something, I'll go, go and get it for them. Um, but uh, I'm gonna try and shoot some video, but that may not happen because things things move fast when concrete's going down, especially cold weather with a, an accelerated concrete mix. Um, they're gonna have to be moving along pretty quick. So I may or may not get video, uh, but that's gonna wrap things up for today. I hope this has been interesting. I hope this caught you up on progress on the pole barn project, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.